and the air is heavy and humid. Until now, the enemy has held sway here. I was Dr. Kenneth A. Schiffer, S-C-H-I-F-F-E-R. When I entered the Air Force, I was uh, made a captain because I had been through medical school and full residency training in pediatrics. I served at some base in California known as Vandenberg. V-A-N-D-E-N-B-E-R-G, Air Force Base. There was a draft which does not exist now, and therefore every male, and only men were drafted, women could volunteer, knew that they were in some manner going to be taken into Army, Navy, Air Force usually at their 18th to 22nd birthday. Because I had become a um, medical school student, I was deferred. Deferred meant left until it was uh, time for me to go into the service. I was given my choice of serving in Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. I chose the Air Force. And at the end of my residency training in pediatrics, and actually one year called chief residency, I was uh, taken into the Air Force, given the uh, level of captain in the Air Force. That's the second level of being an officer, first lieutenant and then captain. And it was a two year service. Uh, the attitude of the uh, country at the time was uh, very negative to the Vietnam War. Uh, it, it, most of the people outside of the armed forces base were very negative. Uh, the surrounding area, which includes uh, Santa Barbara County, uh, were definitely uh, not for becoming involved in the uh, Vietnam War. Uh, the armed forces personnel are um, actually under the uh, uh, auspices of the president as commander in chief. And there was a somewhat different attitude among the uh, servicemen at the time. Yeah, you know, the general attitude during the Second World War that it was the patriotic duty to go and fight the war. This was not the feeling of the general public during the Vietnam. Uh, conflict. Give my thanks to America. I live to thank you, America, for the right to pray, for the right to pray, for the right to say what I want to say. I pledge my heart to America, America. to do my I was at an age and I guess a mindset in which I basically did what I 
was told to do. I had gotten into various schools, colleges, medical school, res internship, residency, and saw that as a very positive part of our country. And it was now my turn to serve my country. And there was little doubt in my mind that it was the appropriate thing to do. Armed Forces personnel are part of uh, the, the effort. Uh, the president is considered the commander in chief. And I would say that among the Armed Forces personnel, nobody really wanted to go and fight, but the general feeling was what the president wanted them to do was what they were going to do. As a serviceman, you are uh, obligated to follow the rules and regulation of your superiors. Well, again, my life during this, that period was to be a physician and even more so a pediatrician and the senior pediatrician on an Air Force base for which I was working for the American government, the United States government. And basically what I did at the Air Force Base where I was chief pediatrician was what I was going to do the next 30, 40 years of my life, run an office and take care of young patients in, at all levels, both sick and immunization checkup. It was uh, a, a, a decision that Ken made to join something called the Berry Plan. The Berry Plan was an option that the federal government gave uh, physicians the right to complete their education in full, but then were obligated to give two years to the armed forces. And uh, that's what Ken did. Um, he gave, they let him finish, he was completely trained, and then gave two years back to the country. It prevented them from drafting me as a private and making me make between two years in the service, perhaps with a gun in my hands. Yeah, we actually knew uh, one serviceman. Uh, the, sir, the medical corps is composed based of dentists and uh, physicians. And uh, there was a junior pediatrician who came in a year after Ken. He came in in 1966, the uh, name uh, 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 Captain Cohn. And uh, Captain Cohn was uh, selected uh, by the uh, uh, the government to uh, represent uh, Vandenberg Air Force Base uh, in, uh, in, in Vietnam. So he actually went to court. Other than he, I'm sure there were others, but none that we knew particularly well. I, I don't think that we actually were tainted by what was going on in Vietnam War. I think that Ken, as a pediatrician on the base, performed the same uh, chores and tasks that he would have performed had they not been a Vietnamese war or an escalation, I should say an escalation of the Vietnamese War, which occurred in 1966. So he essentially was the head doctor uh, taking care of the children uh, of the uh, enlisted and the officers on Vandenberg Air Force Base. I don't think the war uh, affected in any way his decision on how to practice pediatrics at the base. Precisely true. It's hard to, to pick out or to remember after so many years anything particular. I do recall that when President Johnson in 1966 uh, chose to escalate the uh, United States participation in the Vietnam War, this affected the medical corps and uh, many of the wives of the medical corps personnel 
um, were very disturbed with the possibility of having their mate uh, go across uh, and uh, be shot at uh, by the uh, Viet Cong. So I, I don't know a specific case except the uh, uh, Captain Cohn's wife was deeply troubled when uh, he was selected to go uh, to uh, Vietnam. She was very, very upset and uh, did not handle it well. But other than that, I didn't know anybody personally who was affected by uh, the Vietnamese war escalation. Basically, I continued what I had been trained to do, that is be, take care of the children of the soldiers on the base, soldiers and their wives on the base. And I almost never carried a gun. I was licensed to carry a gun, but on the Vandenberg Air Force Base, I saw little or no reason for actually carrying a gun. Um, the Air Force was very fair in allowing us time off of uh, two weeks here to come back to New York and see family and whatever. We had two of our three children, who you know, Todd and Michelle, at that time. Todd was about a two and a half to three year old. Michelle, about a one year old. And we enjoyed time with them like any other mother and father. And I basically did not see it as a major disability. Um, I had had lots of time at uh, Albert Einstein at College of Medicine and Montefiore Hospital and knew I could go back there to teach as I built the practice later, a uh, practice that two of our three children are now still running in uh, 2021. And I was not terribly negative. Again, people were not shooting at me. People were not throwing things at me. I was doing what I had been trained and chose myself to do. Well, I think the Vietnam, Vietnam War was, uh, it was a different kind of a war. Uh, and um, we were not prepared for it. We were used to wars in which uh, soldiers come and fight each other. Uh, but the, the Vietnam War was different. It was the development of the Viet Cong approach of uh, sitting in the trees and uh, snipers shooting at the uh, civilians. Um, you, you're not giving you a chance to, uh, to fight back. It's, it's a completely different approach. It's guerrilla warfare. It's the warfare that extended later on to other battles. It is so different than the concept of World War I and World War II, where uh, cavalry of army, armed men went and fought each other. Um, but personally, we were not overly affected by it simply because Ken's role as the office pediatrician of the base was simply taking care of children, which is what he did and did did afterwards as well. So we didn't really get affected by the Vietnamese war uh, as it actually was fought. Well, uh, the only thing I, I could say was that the two years we spent uh, on Vandenberg Air Force, Force Base were uh, actually very wonderful years for us. Um, irregardless of what was going on internationally. We were really not exposed to what really was occurring. And we did not see President Johnson's escalation as absolutely as horrible as it actually was. And of course, affected the fact that he never ran again for a second term because of the displeasure of the American people.